Hello, everybody. Um, we are Sabrina Feuerherd and Mike from the German Digital Service, um, service designer and software engineer. And today we want to show you how we work on all future public sector services at once. Woo! Yes, I know. How do we do this? Let me explain. So maybe some of you have seen this before, but I'm going to say it anyway. So people experience a public service or product in a very personal way. Um, they want to get something done or they need to get something done and they compare their expectations with the reality of the experience. Um, that is one side of the coin here. Yes. <laughs> the other side, the other side is what the administration or the government specifies. Um, those are guidelines, regulations, laws, here on this side. Um, and in the middle is the process that translates the whole thing. And we are in this process and in that part and everywhere, basically. So, for example, on one hand, we have a law. In this case, the law on the reform of real estate tax and valuation law. And on the other hand, is what citizens want to do is to submit a property tax return without errors and with as little effort as possible because they have to, not because they want to, actually. This person, another example, wants to apply for a student loan. What they don't want to do instead is think about some federal law on individual support for education. Now, um, there are actually a multitude of factors that condition seamless public sector, uh, sector digitalization in Germany. One of them is digital ready policy. What is digital ready policy? Digital ready policies are something that enables simple and effective implementation, which means being focused on the needs of the citizens and the people who are um, the people who have to um, use the law later or the service. And they take full advantage of digital opportunities. Also, digital ready policies are for the benefit of all participants, which means participants in this context are citizens, residents, the administration, companies, for example, or other organizations uh, such as associations. Our goal with our work is 100% digital ready policy. Yes, or in human terms, actually, our goal is to empower policy drafters to write the most digital ready policy possible every time. There are things that keep us actually from reaching this goal. First thing is drafting policy is now as the status quo a very text heavy process in a strict hierarchical corset. And trying to change this process, even a little bit, takes quite a time. Second, policy drafters are used to checking their policy after writing it with a plethora of checklists. So everything we create will naturally be used in the end as well, and not in the beginning, as it maybe should be. Third, there's a constant feeling of too little time. That might be because there's politic political pressure for a quick result, or um, they're starting too late to factor in new activities. So this is the gap. How are we bridging the gap? Our levers and touch points. We work on four different levels to overcome these hurdles, to overcome this gap. First, we raise awareness, very important. We inform about process and content. We train policymakers, and we structure content and ways of working. These here are some of our touch points and activities we use for these four levers. For example, promoting the use of visualization, 
or trainings and workshops. Now, let's take a deep dive into a topic that might seem boring for some, but which is actually very important for us, a PDF. <laughs> Why PDF? The PDF is the primary document we provide at the moment to policy drafters to complete a digital check for the policies they are producing. Step one, I'm going to go through these steps very quickly now. Step one is a simple pre-check. This pre-check determines whether they should consider digital implementation while writing the policy or whether they don't have to consider it. Step two is super simple, just writing the policy as digital ready as possible using various methods. And step three is the documentation of the digital readiness, which is then sent to the National Regulatory Control Council, who checks this. And more on this, Mike will tell you. Thank you, Sabrina. Here, take this, this cool. Very cool yes. Um, so, the PDF is the vehicle, for, for better or worse, that we're using to get from where we currently are to where we want to be in the future. Um, it's gone through several iterations over the past few years. <laughs> click, 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 click. Um, so as Sabrina's already mentioned, there are two parts to this process. First uh, is the pre-check step at the beginning, and at the end the legislators are submitting a full documentation. Um, and we're collecting a variety of data during these steps. So during the pre-check, uh, the data we're capturing is mostly structured, um, simple, straightforward, yes, no questions. Um, on the documentation side, the data collected at the end is, is much more loosely or even completely unstructured, um, made up of yeah, freeform text, spreadsheets, lists, visualizations, and so on. Um, but what's important, as Sabrina kind of already alluded to, is what comes in between. So that's the hard work of tracking down relevant information to complete the documentation and improve the quality of the legislation at the end. Um, we're offering plenty of guidance on what tools, methodologies, workshop formats, visualization formats, templates that they can use for this. And we're also offering direct support from our team in some of these cases. Um, so the documentation process itself, it's very fuzzy. It's inherently fuzzy. No two policies will ever follow the same path. Um, and that's really challenging for legislators. And this is the feedback that we get because they're really used to working in very absolute certainties. Um, and kind of being uncomfortable with ambiguity is part of the job description in a sense. Um, so with that in mind, we really have to accept that we're asking a lot from, from legislators and proceed with empathy for them um, based on that. So for that reason, it's been really important for us to embrace these constraints, understand how our impact is limited, and understand that we're playing a long game if we're going to transform this process in any meaningful way. So the doctrine we're trying to follow is, uh, or it kind of states that we're, we should store as little data as possible. Um, in our case, we're taking it one step further and, and storing no data at all. So the data I'm talking about that's embedded within these PDFs is communicated directly between government officials, so legislators and the non protola the National Regulatory National Control Regulatory Council. Regulatory, sorry, Council. <laughs> um, uh, so we can also transport some non-sensitive data that is embedded directly with URLs are uniquely generated and encrypted. Um, but none of this requires us to have a database or a permanent storage of any kind attached to the website. Um, and this is really important because we have quite a small team and uh, it means we can save a lot of capacity, a lot of our work capacity and, and energy, not spend as much time and resources on, for example, security or privacy topics. Uh, so we're yeah, creatively embracing the constraints that we have on us. Um, there is one constraint you might assume that we do have, but we don't. We do. We are able to work iteratively, user-centric, data-driven within the government context, 
Yes, really? Yes. <laughs> um, each new version that we've released undergoes a process of starting with a hypothesis, testing those prototypes with real users, then iterating based on that feedback, and then of course, rinse and repeat. Um, so, back to the PDF. The beta version of this PDF was introduced at the end of 2022. This means that legislators have had now two years to slowly get used to this process. Very quickly, the second version was introduced, and crucially, this is the version that included an interactive form. So from this point onwards, the PDFs that were being submitted had data kind of embedded within them. This was not only really helpful for the users, because it, it helps them complete the form more easily, uh, but it, it gives us uh, then this kind of usable data for us to kind of execute our workflows on, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, and then, I'm going to use this cool feature, uh, later versions of this, um, of the document went through kind of uh, improving the accessibility, uh, overhauling and streamlining the processes, or iterating on those processes, improving wording, clarity, things like this. Um, so with the process in place for some time, now was the right time to take a, take a bigger leap forward. So just, just recently, just last month or this month, um, we've done so, or we think so at least. Um, so using the, the analogy of a, of a hockey stick graph going up to the right, um, if the various iterations of the PDF were the blade of the hockey stick and the website that we've just recently released is, is the handle. Um, so here's the website. It's publicly available. Anyone can go and take a look at it. I forgot to put a QR code here, but uh, ask me later and I can tell you the URL. Um, so the two big leaps we've taken forward, uh, taken in this, in this version are, are as follows. Um, we're now providing extensive guidance on selecting and applying the best practice methods that we recommend to create these documentations. And critically, we've almost, did, uh, almost entirely digitized the process of doing the pre-check step online. Um, we've implemented a bunch of features that we think are quite novel that, that embrace these constraints I've been talking about. Um, so first of all, we're programmatically generating PDFs that are pre-filled um, with the answers to the pre-check. We're creatively using these mail-to links that you might be familiar with to, to ease the submission of, uh, of, of, of the, the documentation for the, for the legislators. Um, so they can very quickly pull up in their email program a draft email that has all the, all the relevant data they need. Um, we're transporting structured data by these PDFs, as I've kind of alluded to. At the end of the process, we get these PDFs back that have been submitted and approved. So that's where we can then scrape those, those PDFs for data um, and figure out metrics, derive actionable insights from those. We also have some uh, less visible features but, uh, that are built into our development process uh, that enable us to work much more efficiently. So um, we're working trunk-based. This means we can uh, deploy changes really quickly. We can release multiple times a day if we want to, or if it's necessary. That's release new versions of the website is, is what that means. Um, we're using feature flags so we can run experiments. Uh, we can turn features on and off really quickly. Uh, and this makes kind of testing and user interviews and things like this uh, very easy uh, to test new features. And finally, uh, we're tracking everything um, that we can, every user interaction, so we can make decisions based on quantitative behavioral data. Uh, one point on that, quantitative, it's, it's a, relevant, uh, a relative term. We're talking about, we think, maybe a maximum of 4,000 legislators in all of Germany, so our, our theoretical audience is still quite small, but still, we think we can get some, some insights from that behavioral data. Um, so as I said, we, we consider this to be a big, big leap forward uh, toward better digital ready policies for a few reasons. Um, for policy drafters, they're now seeing for themselves what an immersive digital, user-centered digital experience actually looks and feels like. Um, and we think that's a big step. Um, for the government and the administration, it's hopefully helping to streamline and standardize processes uh, for creating these digital ready policies. Um, and for citizens, we hope this is creating some transparency around the entire process. Um, we have a lot of, 
ideas for the future, we're, we're just getting started. Um, so these are some of the things we think could come next. Um, we'd like to tailor the suggested methodologies for creating documentations to the answers that are provided during the free check. We'd like to expand our support offering to legislators so they get more multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary input. Um, so this support offering is really us sitting with legislators and, and teams of legislators as they're working on policies and we're helping them with visualizations, um, documentation kind of steps in a hands-on process. Um, we could try to streamline the process of finding relevant experts. So this is a really important step. Uh, and it's something that legislators tell us that they struggle with. We would love to explore whether machine learning and natural language processing could provide some indications of rel relative quality, quality and give kind of feedback, real-time feedback to legislators as they're working. And similarly, we could look into um, seeing if we can utilize large language models. Uh, <laughs> I know, buzzwords, sorry. Um, to provide useful, useful support, feedback uh, for the legislators, but as a, make, a, a point of making very clear here, obviously that has to be with very, very strict firewalls that are preventing this technology from having an outsized influence mm -hmm. on the process. So in other words, we don't want robots writing our laws. Um, and finally, uh, we'd love to provide easy ways to collect and integrate citizen and stakeholder input directly into the process. So, Automated questionnaires could be one example of, of that. Just like a product, a law is never finished. Um, laws like products or processes are in a constant state of change and evolution. The time spans are definitely different. For products, we're used to thinking in iterations of weeks or months, whereas for laws, beliefs are measured in years or even decades. Um, so the change that we're seeking is going to take time, but we do think that we're getting somewhere, and hopefully now, with what we've shared, you have, you can somewhat agree. Mm -hmm. um, thanks. We have a few minutes for questions, if anybody.